Wow, this is beautiful. And I'm going to shut up now because I just want to enjoy this music. And I hope you enjoy it too. going to talk to me now? I'm shaking my pad, but he doesn't seem to want to do anything. So I'll go in the house and see. Well, the cottage. What a beautiful cottage this one is. I presume Wendy is gone just like everyone else. Keen bird watcher <laughs> by David Attenborough or Attleborough. Don't know if that's just a, a play. Ever so drawn this morning. That bloody dog kept me awake. And there was that thing in the sky. The radio says it was an electrical storm, but I don't know what it was. This morning, I found some dead birds in the garden. I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder if it might have had something to do with the atmospheric conditions. My Stephen will probably know. I'll give him a call in a bit. Wendy, I've popped around because we've had some incidents with some of the more elderly residents. Mrs. Bout has, well, vanished, for want of a better word. Wandered off somewhere, no doubt. I thought I'd best check and see you're all right. The council are talking about a flu epidemic. Yes, well, I'm not sure it's flu as such. But uh, no headaches, nosebleeds, no joint pains or digestive issues. Dr. Wade, I'm as fit as a fiddle. Go and find some real sick people to look after. And if you see that son of mine, tell him that his mother's looking for him. So a little bit more of a glimpse at village life. Now I don't believe this kitchen for starters because there would definitely be a plastic bucket uh, or basin in the sink for people to wash up in. It's, it's one of the most horrible <laughs> ways of washing up, I know, but Brits love to somehow, they don't think a sink is enough. They have to put a bloody plastic basin in it. It's disgusting. You don't wash things properly. You need to rinse it off. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have people complaining about that. So I took a quick break a couple of minutes ago and I, uh, I Google mapped Yorton and Yorton doesn't actually exist. If you type it in, it literally does just bring up uh, everybody's gone to the rapture. So a uh, little bit disappointed. I mean, it was set in Shropshire, but I mean, there you go. I mean, the, the Chinese room have done such a good job that, um, that I thought that this legit was an actual British village because, you know, it, to me, it feels like the quintessential British village. So we're a little bit further up. So they are kind of splitting this into different areas, I guess. So we're in the Tipwood Forest. So I guess we've got Appleton's Farm, Little Tipworth, Lakeside, and Vallis Observatory next. And I hear another radio. Going away, Amanda? Oh, just for a few days, yeah. First thing in the morning. I don't want the kids to catch this flu if it's going round. It's probably that father, Jeremy, spreading it around while he tries to bully everyone into donations for the summer fete. It seems very quiet in the village, actually, Wendy. Not much bullying to be done. Oh, father, I didn't know you were here. Clearly. Listen, I came up here to tell Amanda that we've had some vandalism in the village. Must be a teenage thing. Tagging, I think they call it. Someone's painting all over doors and things. Little vandals. Well, I'll tell Neil to make sure we're properly locked up when we go. A good man like my Eddie, gone. And these thugs and yops running around defacing property. He gave everything to his country, and look what he got in return. Nothing but an early death. He had a good life, Wendy. He had a short life. I look to my birds, father. Lives lived unencumbered, free and simple. That's as God meant things to be. Hmm. So I do like these little snippets of life that we, we see from people, building up an idea of character. Now, where is this radio? Is it up in the treehouse? 
Can we go up the treehouse? Yes, we can. My God. So let's have a look up here. What is the coordinates One, here? Every computer in the observatory has set itself to 607 a.m. June 6th, 1984. I don't understand what that means. Hmm. Day of the rapture? Depends what day it's recorded, I guess. What what day that you know, what day that observation was made. Could it be a foretelling of a portentous event? Or is it just that time has stopped on that particular point? Let's see, your clock. Yeah, so it's the same here. I noticed the um church clock as well was stuck at a particular time. I think there's something quite intrinsically British about a sci-fi post-apocalyptic type thing. I mean, not many people think of it, but you forget that, um, I don't know, a lot of end of the world sci-fi was written by British authors. Were written by British, was written, were written, is written. I mean, War of the Worlds was British, although it seemed to me in that that um, everyone just had cups of tea in between the alien invasion, which entertained me no end. Hello? Oh, it's on the bonnet. Hello? It got as far as the Haverton substation before we cut the lines. The interchange there just started dialing numbers at random. And the symptoms you're seeing match those we've been tracking here. Sickness, headaches, nosebleeds, eventual hemorrhage, then just light, whatever the hell that means. Then we've got to stop it before it finds another way out of the valley. Clive, you've got to order a strike. What? An airstrike. We have to kill it. No. No, uh, I don't agree. We've quarantined the valley, we've cut the lines, it's contained. What if you're wrong? Are you happy to have that on your conscience? Stephen, I said it's contained. Mysterious. So I'm going to go backwards before we go forwards and just double check I haven't missed anything. Ring, ring. Where is it? Back in the days when everyone had a standardised ringtone? Hello. Hello. Frank Appleton. Break a lost cowboy. This is Travelling Sherlock. You copy over. You dab bugger, Charlie. You don't do it when you're using the phone. You'd say this too seriously, Appleton, I'm telling you. It is serious. It's not larking about. You'll be listening to your number stations again, Frankie. It's not funny. It's serious stuff. And you should mind it. Now then, I'm assuming this is about a point. I am going to the Whistler. My round, I think. I'll never argue with that. Frank, have you seen the sky? It's amazing. Don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I didn't realise we were off to a poetry recital as well, Charlie. <sighs> So some kind of event happened in the sky. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a bloody tissue on the side there, so I think it's safe to say that um, Frank, I guess, has gone. Frank Appleton, so I'm guessing he's Stephen's, Stephen's uh, dad, given that Kate's American. Terry called this morning. Said there was a problem with Harvey. Said he couldn't get through to the vet, so I said I'd come round and take a look. There's a lot of dead birds today. More here, too, poor little things. I've been trying to get hold of Steve, and he always knows what to do. Got round here, and no sign of either of them. With any luck, the stupid creature will have run under a car. It's probably rabies. Hmm. So they think some kind of creature was killing the birds. So it seems like Stephen is a staple member of this village. Harvey's there. I wonder, I wonder if, if Harvey went to the rapture as well. Harvey! Harvey, come on, boy! Come on, Harvey! Come on, Harvey! Come on, boy! Harvey! Harvey. Harvey's gone to the rapture, mate. He's, uh, in the big kennel in the sky. Oh, this is beautiful here. I'll tell you one beautiful bit of countryside I've explored, and that's in Scotland, West Scotland. Just push it, 
push the bloody thing. You push it. I told you it would get stuck. I should have just taken the car. This was a stupid idea. <laughs> Moving here was a stupid idea. And I told you, Barbara said they blocked the roads. <sighs> you go and look then. Wait, is that Harvey? Harvey? Harvey! Harvey! Here, boy! Come here, boy! I wonder what type of dog Harvey is. Um, yeah, West Scotland. I remember... I went to around uh, Loch Lomond. Apologies to Scots for saying Loch wrong. I know I probably have. And there was an area up there where there was... It was called, like, the Fairy Woods or something like that. Absolutely beautiful. Moss everywhere. Little waterfalls. Really, like, dense wood. Um, that you almost think... You know, it was raining, but we, we didn't get wet because it was so... Dense. Where's that radio? Oh, it's a it's a memory. Here we go. Let's activate it. Wendy, I'm married. You have to stop this. He's still sweet on you, Elizabeth. He, he left. It's too late. You loved each other long before she came along. It's just about making things as they should be. Wendy, no. It's not like you won't bump into each other anyway. One drink, what can that hurt? Oh, one drink, maybe. Oh, one <laughs> drink, wonderful. <laughs> this Wendy is quite the troublemaker, isn't she? She doesn't like... Jeremy, she's uh, causing all kinds of problems and she's trying to split up Stephen and Kate because presumably that's who they're talking about there. Um, so Lizzie can get to the midst of her. Lizzie obviously had that conversation with Jeremy earlier about how she was falling in love. Oh, it's like a... Who's this? Robert Graves' auto repair. So what happened here? So that's obviously the mechanic that we saw in town. Oh gosh, there's a tree trunk right through it. Can you see that? So he's definitely dead then. No memory here? I'm gonna go check down the river. So another bus stop, uh, another radio back here. I'm further down on the river, so I've gone backwards a little bit. Phone call from Stephen. He wants to shut down the receiver. Something about instances across the valley. There's intermittent electrostatic discharges radiating out of Tower 6. All of the electrics on the main gate are blown. I'll find time to take a look once the data stream begins to calm down here. Curious. So this was the bridge. Oh yeah, so that's the uh, crappy house over there. So I need to turn around and head back, but not after I just double check this area, although it would appear I have been here. Good grief, Wendy. You catch your death. They're all dead, Father. All of my birds. Here. Take my jacket. I tried to be a good woman. A Christian woman. But I've been proud. Just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. What matters is we try our best. God sees that. Come back to the village with me. I'm not so far from Stevens now. I need to find my son. It's what Eddie would have done. Yes. I suppose it is. I'll say a prayer for you. Thank you, Father. She loved you, you know, Mary. You helped her. I'm sorry if I judged you harshly. It doesn't matter now. Slate, you, you should find a place to sleep. I'm sure when the sun comes up, everything will seem better. So some forgiveness there. I really am absolutely in love with the way this is telling a story here of, you know, the kind of complicated lives that we lead and the way everything is interwoven and it's nice, it's beautiful. I find this almost like a radio drama, which is a very British thing, I guess. Wow, so the train line has actually derailed. Is there something here? There's a... There we go. 
Can I make you talk to me? There we go. Talk to me. Oh gosh, there's so much blood. Howard. Howard, what's happened? Stephen, thank God. Listen, I need you to get to the junction box. See if there's a phone working. No, stay back. Don't come up here. Oh Christ. Is that bloody idiot? <laughs> Where the hell did they think they were going? I think they must have thought they could walk out along the line. Well, there won't be any more trains now. You're a callous bastard, Stephen. Just pragmatic, Howard. Did you say there's a working phone in the junction box? But all the phones are being used for... evil, so... I don't think that seems wise. One of my, um, friends from school um, he trained as a police officer and he said to me one of the cases he had he um, he was called out to someone who had jumped onto the train lines and I, I don't know how he dealt with it you know my friend when he was younger you know, he was always like the super nerd the super geek but joining the police force really seemed to kind of toughen him up and he was telling me quite plainly how he had to deal with this and how he actually had to collect up what remained of the poor person who had jumped and inform the next of kin and I, I couldn't believe how strong he was in dealing with it because I just thought if I'd had to deal with that I would have needed a lot of therapy to deal with it just awful the things you know, for my friend as well. I lost my well. shoes. I lost my shoes, sir. There's arches on the green. They've taken my shoes, sir. Howard? Howard Lantham? You open the door this instant, young man. I lost my shoes. <sighs> now get up. Get up. I lost my shoes. What on earth are you doing here, Howard? Stephen. He told me to stay in case Lizzie phoned. Stephen, where is he? What are you doing with those birds? Concentrate, Howard. Where's Stephen? He said we couldn't help them. He took my shoes so I'd stay. Listen to me, Howard Lantham. You find your shoes and you get to the village. Find Father Jeremy. He'll give you some soup or something. Be off with you. Where are you going? I'm gonna find my son. Then I'm going to ask him what on earth he thinks he's doing. So I'm guessing Wendy is, um, Jeremy's mother? I guess? That's what I'm thinking. Notice that Howard there said, Argy's took my shoes. Um, so this was in, set in 1984, when Margaret Thatcher was, um, Prime Minister in the UK. And one of the things she's notorious for is overseeing the Falklands War in Argentina and obviously not dealing very well with the miners' strikes. Fancy seeing you here. Oh. Is everything all right, my dear? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm all right. I'm all right. It's just... Robert, that man doesn't deserve you. I know everybody thinks I'm just a mither and old busybody, but someone has to say what everyone else is thinking. We both know that this marriage, it's not how things are supposed to be. Are you talking about me and Robert? Or is this really about Stephen and Kate? I suppose it is. I have to accept it. I know, but she doesn't belong here. You see that, don't you? There's a place for people, and this isn't hers. Oh. I'm not talking about the colour of her skin. Don't look at me like that. What they do up there, it's not natural. There are some things we're not supposed to understand. I don't like her, and I don't like how Stephen is around her. He was a better man when he was with you. A little bit controversial there, so I'm guessing by Wendy's uh, rather offhand comment there that 
Kate is African American. African American and a female scientist. My god. Little workout area. Ooh. I say, muscles of the month. Rachel, darling, I'm sorry about taping over your music, but we, that is your dad and I, in case you come home, I mean, I know Mrs. Graves is looking after you over there, but just in case you come home, we wanted to let you know we're going to head over to Bart's. Evie! Evie! Sam, I'm leaving a message for Rachel. Are you going to say hello? Jesus Christ, Evie, we ain't got time for this. The bloody car won't start. We're going to have to walk. Sam, shush, it's for Rachel in case she comes back here. But Charlie says everyone's getting together at the hall. Rachel's at the camp. She'll be fine. Rachel, darling, anyway, listen, as I was saying, we're going to be at the village hall. We'll wait there for you. I think it's best if you just stay put and mind what Mrs Graves tells you. We love you, darling. Bye. Bye, Mum. You finished? Right, grab that bloody case and let's get moving. Come on. Dad, as grumpy as ever there. Um, hello, light. Have you got something to show me here? Come on, then. Or are you just showing off? All right, I'm hurrying. Gosh, these lights aren't half bossy, are they? I do wonder with all this contamination, exposure to them, if I'm in trouble. Oh, there's another radio around here. Where is it? Is it in the beehive? Oh, right, there it is. Give me your number. Come on. Start up again. Beehive. I have no idea if these numbers are actually relevant to anything. I've not seen a pattern in anything so far. There's something in the observatory with me. I can feel it reaching out to me. When it's close, I'm overcome with the most profound sense of loneliness. Well, I wonder if beings from outer space are lonely or not. I also wonder if we'll ever find evidence of extraterrestrial life. I mean, there's certainly been a lot of exciting developments this year, come on. Light up, light up! Gosh, that sounds evil. Hello? Oh wow, kitchen straight away. That's quite a unique design. Let's scope out the ground floor before we head up. Oh gosh, it's quite cosy in here, isn't it? No doubt experts in uh, bird calls can tell you what kind of bird that is. Look. Okay, it's trying to say something. Come on. Maybe I need to go upstairs first. It does respond when I shake the controller, but... It's just not... It's not sticking around long enough for me to do anything, so I wonder if I need to go up here first. And reveal... Wendy? Wendy, wake up. Eddie, is that you? No, it's me. It's Frank. Oh, Frank. Oh, the door was open. I didn't think Graham would mind. I'm sure he won't. What are you doing here? Looking for Stephen, but I just ran out of steam. And the door was open. Have you listened to the radio? I thought I heard him on the radio before. It's all over the valley. Don't you get that? This isn't some abstract thing. Whatever came down into the tower has got out. They've quarantined the whole valley. It's right here in the observatory. It's out in the world. It's adapting and spreading. Do you understand? Right. We can't turn it away. What's he talking about? I don't know, Ken. But if he's on the radio, we can try and reach him on the CB. You go to Stephen's house, and if I get hold of him, I'll tell him to come and find you. People who don't speak English, Ken is another word for no. I think it's Scottish, actually. This radio doesn't seem to want to interact with anything. So this guy's into his astrology. Wait, no, I need to get this right. There's astrology and there's astronomy. Professor Brian, Brian Cox would be deeply disappointed if I got the two confused. Right, let's see, can I activate you now? No. No, I cannot. I wonder if that's a time-sensitive thing, but... Oh, well, it seems to have flown off. So people are just disappearing at random, and... Other people are, while they're trying to escape, are... 
get you into the houses. I don't know if you noticed as well, there was um, a clock in that room and it was stuck at the same time that everywhere else has been stuck to. Come on, come on, come on, you stupid bastard. Christ, not now, come on. Ah, damn bloody thing! Jesus! Come on, not now! Jesus, come on, you bastard! Start! Start, you bastard! Come on! Ah. That's quite a lot of cussing. Don't think any amount of cussing will bring that car back to life. What have you got for me here? Another empty house with a door open. More Triffids. Now, I'm shaking the controller and it's not interested in doing anything. Stephen! There, I told you! Bloody plastic bowls in the basin! Ugh! Disgusting! Why don't you actually rinse? Stephen, are you here? It's your mother. Answer me! Where is she? Is she upstairs? Stephen! Guessing she's upstairs. More creepy uh, banshee chaps are counting. What have you done, Stephen? Stephen's house then. So it looks like he's gone mad and everything's toppled over. Oh my gosh. So I'm guessing that's sightings maybe? They're all over the place. One, two. Zero, six. One, two. One, two. One, one. I bet we're going to get to the end of this. So I'm going to find out that there's no point to any of this. There must be a logic to the pattern. It's shifting in response to me. It's alive. It's the only explanation. It's alive. I do wonder if we ever make extraterrestrial contact, if it would... You know, we, we have such a rich history of depicting aliens as, you know, green naked ladies, greys. Stephen, where's Kate? Are you here? But I do wonder if ultimately when we make contact it will be something like this, where it's a light, a gesture, an electrical current. Something like that, something that we don't really expect. No memories here? Oh, here we go. There's two lights here. Which one? Got it. Stephen? I can hear the planes. It's the government coming to rescue us. You can come out now. It's all going to be all right. I can hear the jets coming. It's like when Eddie came home. It's like your dad coming home again. Doesn't look like Chet's to me. I'm here. I'm down here. This way. Like that, she's gone. I don't know if you notice as well, what I just stepped over there was her trolley bag full of dead birds. So Stephen's mother is gone, and I guess that's the second, the second story told. But I wonder what those lights were, I wonder if they were planes just going overhead, obviously clearly not to rescue the area, or if it was another light incident. Hopefully we'll find out what's going up in the observatory. I reckon we're going to end up in the observatory in the final chapter. But in the meantime, let's see who our next soul is.